Scammers are trying to steal hard earned cash from bank accounts, leaving many people asking, where's the money? One of the latest ploys attempting to get people to send scammers money through the banking app Zelle. Thank you for joining us. I'm Nick Sturdivant. I'm here with Jesse Pierre. How are yes, you doing? I am very, very good. I mean, this is a topic that's very important yeah. to me right now. <laughs> you worked on the story. How did you come across this story? Well, first off, scams are getting so much more sophisticated. They're getting so much more advanced. So anytime I'm seeing any uh, emails we've gotten about someone getting scammed, I'm on it. I want to hear about it. Now, this one in particular, it actually happened to one of our colleagues' loved ones. Mm -hmm. So she added the pitch, and I, as soon as I saw it, as someone who's on alert, <laughs> looking at, every, uh, you know, double or triple checking every text message I get, emails I get, and so forth, I had to jump on it. <laughs> uh, so how does this all work? We, we know it works through Zelle, but how does this work? So the gentleman I spoke to said he got a phone call and it was a familiar phone call. It literally says Bank of America on wow, that's it. scary. Okay, and then the person who's on the phone sounded very professional, sounded very legit, telling him he had a fraudulent account under his name. And really the goal at the end of this is really trying to convince this person to send money back to this account. And you know, it's like once you start sending money out, <laughs> it's like giving cash to, uh, to the scammer, right, yeah. directly. And so I spoke to him, and um, here's what he said, uh, describing a little bit about what he had encountered with this imposter. Between the caller ID, the person on the phone, it sounded like a real call from Bank of America. They said that, well, there were two Zelle transfers that are pending that were made from that new checking account that I would be on the hook for um, if we didn't get it straightened out. So, so like I said, the scary part about it is it sounded just like Bank, Amer Bank of America. What did Bank of America have to say? Well, first off, not only did it sound just like Bank of America, it, you know, it said Bank of America yeah. on the phone call, but he also said that they tried to get him to send like $3,500 through you know, through his Zelle account. And um, Bank of America, they're pretty much saying that, you know, they would never call someone and tell you to send money in. They would never tell you to send money back to yourself. And really they're urging folks to only send money to people you know. You can verify this with their phone number or their email address. And that's really what the account, the Zelle account is connected to. Um, so just very scary scene. So he, he did feel at some point that it sounded suspicious. What he ended up doing is logging in on the app himself mm -hmm. and saw that there was no fraudulent account there. He saw his checking account, he saw his savings account. Yeah. And he asked the imposter, well, hey, where's this third account you're talking about? And they're like, oh, it's been flagged. That's why it's not on there. So he hung up and he called Bank of America directly. And that's when they told him this is a scam that's been going around. So he was able to figure it out, but for fo folks who fall victim to this, like, what can they do about this? It's a really tough I decide, one. Like, <sighs> like I said earlier, I spoke to the Better Business Bureau, and they say, like, it's really like handing cash to somebody, and it's just kind of gone. You know, the main thing you want to do is you want to report that this has happened, you know? But unfortunately, it's really hard to get or to recover any money once you've sent it out. And we heard from the BBB. Here's what they had to say. If it does happen to a credit card, you do have rights, federal rights to have that taken off your account. Otherwise, you're at the mercy of your bank and there's no protection uh, with your with that direct access to your to your checking account or with your debit card. Again, these scammers, they get creative, creative, creative. Scary. And what's crazy <laughs> is he had a family member that actually got scammed the exact same way and ended up sending $3,500 that same day. Wow. So this is a scam yeah. that is really rampant right now. So you want to be careful. If someone's calling you, telling you to hmm. send money, there's something in your account. If someone calls you, yeah. You hang up and you call them, <laughs> call not them, but call the, you know, the, the number on the back of your card, mm -hmm. you know, find the number directly from the website, but don't give any, anybody money that calls you directly. Really good advice, Jesse. Thank you for your time. And, and this isn't the only scam happening in 2024. WCNC Charlotte's Jay Mommy Raw talk with the Better Business Bureau to learn what you need to look out for so you don't become a victim. Juliana O'Rourke from the BBB says their scam tracker risk report found online purchase scams as one to watch this year. This usually involves ads you see on social media or on the internet. A product from a pricing standpoint, it might be too good to be true. Um, the website address may seem invalid for the product you're looking to purchase. Um, so we always recommend, you know, just being very careful as you're shopping online. If you're looking for a job, there are employment scams. 
if you are being hired on the spot without an interview, that's definitely a red flag. If they're asking for you to pay for any type of training or pay for any office supplies up front, that's going to be a red flag. O'Rourke warns if you're asked to pay for something using cryptocurrency, it could be another type of scam. We're finding, you know, when people are using online dating apps or if they're meeting people online and somebody tells them, oh, hey, I can show you how to invest. I can show you how to make some great crypto. Um, oftentimes those are scams. Home improvement scams involve some individuals or companies that will go door to door offering to do work on your home, like the roof or driveway. Oftentimes, um, these people will want money up front. Sometimes they don't come back to do the work once you've given them some funds or they come back and they do a shoddy job. They don't finish. And the fifth type of scam is an advanced fee loan scam where you're asked to pay a fee up front in order to borrow money. If people are needing loans, they obviously don't have the funds in the first place to be able to provide. And that was Jane Montreal reporting. Now, work says year after year, scammers seem to use the same methods, just targeting different groups of people. But unfortunately, many are still falling for the same tactics. Another scam is over Facebook. Some Facebook page administrators have received uh, surprising notices claiming their page will soon be deactivated. Brandon Lewis verifies if these messages are real. Many businesses have Facebook pages, but some page owners are sharing on Reddit that they received a message in their inbox like this one from someone claiming to be a Facebook employee, warning that their page will be deleted because of a trademark infringement. The message provides a link to use if they want to dispute the decision. Our verifying Facebook page got a similar message, but are these notices legit? Let's verify. Our sources are the Better Business Bureau, Facebook, and an analysis of the Facebook message. The message includes a link to submit a dispute, but it doesn't direct you to an official Facebook or Meta support page. We did some digging and discovered the dispute link actually takes you to a website that has nothing to do with Facebook. And we did a Google search of the Meta employee who supposedly sent us the notification and found no evidence they exist. We also searched the text in the message and found it matches a phishing warning in the BBB's scam tracker. So no, these Facebook trademark infringement notices are not legit. Meta does send page owners notifications if they violate its rules, but they're different. Real notices are sent to your support inbox and include an option to click disagree with decision or an appeal icon directly on the suspended page. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. And thank you so much for joining us. WCNC Charlotte is committed to sharing ways you can save money. You can find our other money-saving ideas by downloading the WCNC app.